Justin Gaethje just did an interview talking about he wants to fight Max Holloway. Where the hell did that come from? That caught me totally off guard. Now, Gaethje was complimentary. Gaethje actually called Max Holloway his favorite fighter. So this came out of a complete uh, place of respect. It shines Max up real nice when he's getting called out by a former champion, up a weight class, one went away from being the, the number one contender. Cool move that he did for his favorite fighter. I'm talking about Gaethje, but where did that come from? Because Gaethje isn't trying to be nice. Gaethje's serious. Gaethje would take that fight. And I'll tell you, I'll be buying that fight. I, that, it's an interesting thing. I do not predict this is going to go anywhere, largely because Justin was so nice about it. Now, if Justin wasn't nice about it, Max would Max would have spoken up. Maybe we have a back and forth. Do we ever get pen to paper on that? I don't know. I don't know that I have a better idea than 155 pounds. I don't know that Max is going to return to 155 pounds, and I can't recall Max being tied up right now. I know Giga was speaking about Max Holloway, so Max must be free. There's my level of work, right, without going and checking what I'm saying right now, but I thought it was interesting that Gaethje called him out. Now, Chandler comes on the back of that. He ends up talking about Gaethje. Chandler says, I'm going to come at him with reckless abandon. I guarantee you he will be the first one to back up. Well, a fight that I didn't think I could be any more interested in. Now I am. Somebody will take action on that. Probably DraftKings. Somebody will take action on what Chandler just said. Who will be the first one to back up? You know what? Not for nothing. That is kind of interesting. It really is kind of interesting. Someone's going to have to go backwards first. And maybe they don't do it electively. Maybe they get locked up and one guy pushes him. But I mean, all the same, it sounds like we have a bet of some level going on. We have some kind of a talking point. Now, when you're talking about talking, when you're thinking about thinking, are you guys following? Brendan Schaub, Errol Hawani. I give you this kind of a layup on this because there is a distinction between the two. And I don't know where these two can't get it right. Two of my absolute favorite guys to be around. Enjoy the hell out of both of them. They're very different. Brendan is like me. He is going to say what he thinks is right. He's going to talk about it and tell you the story the way he believes to be true. Ariel will not open his mouth on anything until he researches it. Ariel will not say anything unless he has a secondary reason to believe it is accurate. Now, Ariel's a journalist, a true, a real journalist. Journalism is one of those words, kind of like nutritionalist counselor to many degree, that you can throw the word out. Scientist apparently gets lumped into that category. You can throw the word out and nobody pushes back. You don't have to be certified, but you can be. You can be. And Ariel actually is. He has a degree in journalism. He follows a code. I love talking to Ariel. Ariel is like talking to your lawyer that you've got a retainer down with or your priest if you're Catholic. It will go no further. It is absolute trust, but that is because of a code of journalism ethics that Ariel subscribes to. Ariel's a very special guy. And I do see when Ariel gets a bad rap, I will sit back and I'll always enjoy it because Ariel's got thick skin and he's also got a sharp tongue. He can eat, take care of himself. But where does that come from? How do you not like Ariel Hawani? I mean, in all fairness, how do you not like Ariel in addition to having to respect him? And I know Brendan and Brendan does. Brendan likes Errol, Andy respects him. So how are they in this back and forth? And I did a level of research on this. It was very hard. I could call Brendan and ask him. I, didn't. I could call Errol and ask him. I didn't do it. I wanted, I, I wanted to sit back and see if I could piece this thing together. And there was five or six shots fired from both. It's important to know who fired the first shot. And I don't. I can't tell you. You're going to have to do your own research, right? You go be Errol Hawani. You figure it out. But they're having this back and forth, and I can't help but think in many ways with a jealousy inside, man, that's good for business. That is, you guys are getting, people are watching. People are paying attention here. People are breaking down these clips. People are pushing this out. Now, this is very real. These two are not working together, of which, by the way, we, the audience, would see through. And if the audience sees through that, you can still get away with it, but you got to be damn good, right? Everybody knows when they go to a movie, 
that they're working together, but you'll sit there and you'll enjoy the movie. You just have some really damn talented professionals that are the ones portraying it to you. Errol and Brendan, this is real. And I don't think there's hard feelings, by the way. I believe they're at the point right now of defending themselves. Defending yourself is very different than hurting the other one or having hard feelings. Those are all steps. They are at an early step called defending themselves. Who went first? What was said? It's relevant. It does matter where this came from. And I just kind of understand both of them. Those partners with Ariel, it will not come out of his mouth unless he has researched that it's accurate. Brendan, me, same guy. Yeah, there's a microphone, there's a camera. I think this is what happened. Put it out. But we also don't have pushback. You don't expect us to be right. You expect a level of entertainment. So it's just two different approaches. Little bit, I can't quite call it a cat fight yet. They're not there. They're not there. They're headed in that direction. By this time next week, unless one of them drops it, because right now it's counter punches. I don't know who's up to bat. But whoever threw the last punch will not throw another one unless the other one fires back. Then they will. And by this time next week, it's not going to be in the defending themselves stage. It will be a fight. Brennan and Arrow will be fighting. I don't take a joy in that. I'm not here to promote it. But I will be covering it. 